And there's the girls. They're just about ready to drop. I forked feet up. Uh, this morning, after this morning, tonight we'll be scraping this out. Good morning, everybody. So, um, got a, just talking about feeding animals here in Saskatchewan and, and well, Canada, basically, right? And there's a lot of guys on YouTube that they've got a lot of videos out there on how to feed animals. And what's the best way to feed animals and so on and so forth and I'm not saying I'm doing it perfect by any means because I just do it my way uh, I don't have a nutritionalist to tell me oh you got to feed this way and you got to feed that and you got to feed this and so on and so forth right girl but I showed you I'll be showing you guys the cows out in the pasture here shortly. And these are growing heifers. I'm not pushing them to get them really fat. Uh, I just want them to grow and be good, strong, long-lasting mamas, okay? This 17 is going to be a hell of a mama as she gets bigger and older. Even this one right here, I'm not sure what her ear tag number is. Now, there's guys out there on YouTube land that, uh, and I'm going to put his name on here. So let's use Greg Judy as an example. Now, don't get me wrong. Greg Judy's a smart man. And he calls it, I think his channel is Greg Judy Regenerative Farmer or some damn thing like that. And he does really well with his animals and so on and so forth. But if you took his practices... And brought them to Canada. Brought them better yet up to our neck of the woods. All of his practices for winter feeding. You could take them and flush them down the toilet. Because that shit ain't going to work up here. Not when you got friggin' snow like this. And Mr. Greg Judy does not understand what it's like to feed animals in this neck of the woods. In my estimation. Not to discredit him for his area and where he lives and for raising, it's a cow-calf operation, for raising cattle where he does it. Winter grazing works great. Winter grazing up here does not work. Not when you got two, three feet of snow laying flat on the ground. That snow's going to cover all that grazing area. And the cows won't dig through that. They don't. Lots of guys have tried up here. They just don't dig through it. Uh, so I got to get the grain put down for these girls. And then we're going to go out to the pasture. And we'll show you them, the cows out there. Our young bulls have already had their grain. And then I think CP and I are going to try getting those hydraulic hoses off of that, mic, that uh, bale processor. And uh, we're going to take those and get them fixed. But yeah, like I was saying, like these girls, they're on the cut feed or ashen, just like our cows, same cut feed. The only difference is now they're up to six pails a day. 13 heifers, they're on six pails of grain a day. Three in the morning with their pellet in the morning, and then three at night with no pellet. They only get the pellet once a day. And so... But yeah, and right now they're at the last end of their cut feed, so it's looking a little crappy, and they're not really liking it that much. So after I put their grain in there and mix it in a little bit, they'll eat up for today, and then tonight they'll get fresh stuff. So, yeah, and it takes a lot more feed uh, to feed heifers cows everything else when you got temperatures like we've been getting this year so so i'd say our cut feed has done quite well for us considering that we've had all this cold weather all our cows in the pasture have been on cut feed 
these heifers have been on cut feed you guys have been along with me and by all means if you like the videos share them if you like what i've been talking about and what i've been showing you guys and our daily lives up here in saskatchewan canada by all means share the videos guys give us the big old thumbs up comment subscribe all that great stuff and uh right now i'm gonna let you go because my freaking hand is freezing and so we'll talk to y'all later all righty guys so we're out here with the cows and i just had a feller message me and said he wants to see what the cows look like well okay and he's really curious as to how this cut feed thing is working out for us well outside of being out here well we generally come out here every day regardless just to check on the cows but i don't know if you want to call this optimum feeding for cow success but look at this red girl right here with her head down big wide back on her and she ain't narrow by any means now the red one with the little blaze right beside her she is a narrow frame cow and her mother was too and she isn't an overly heavy cow but she generally raises a pretty decent calf and her mother was the same way there's not a lot to her really in my estimation compared to well some of these other girls they're massive like look at this black thing right here right so now i hope i was hoping now this is the cut feed, it's all in bunks. And uh, it was 160 bales done on November 25th. Right now we are February the 21st. So we're basically nine, just what is that? November to December, January, February, basically three months, right? You're just over three months. We're only eight days, another eight days and it'll be 90, roughly five days, 95 days on cut feed. And I got enough feed to get us to the end of the month. And that's 160 bales. Plus, uh, what the hell was it? CP and I kind of had it figured out. Um, I think it's 11 or 12 bales that we brought out and fed these girls. Just unrolled the bales because it was so goddamn windy. And I didn't want the wind to blow the cut feet away on us. Like, look at this girl right here. This black broccoli, green 62. Let's use her as an example. I'm going to get around so you can see her better. But you can see she's got a nice belly on her. She's a bigger girl. She's got an udder on her. That's because she aborted last week. But that is a heiferette. She's not even full grown yet. She's still growing, guys. These girls get zero grain. Absolutely zero grain. No grain at all. The only grain that they're getting, like I don't feed no chop or extra grain to these cows. The only grain they're getting is whatever is in the green feed that's ground up and in the in the mix. That's it. That's the only extra, that's the only grain they get. Other than that, they got their mineral tubs and their salt. The mineral tub is a molasses-based mineral. It's got all the protein it's a 25% protein tub with, okay, let's use number nine right here. Green nine, that friggin' cow is 17 years old. She's old and she needs to go down the road. She has next to zero teeth in her mouth probably. 
but she's been fighting you can see the spot in her head the forehead right there that's why that spot is there it's swollen from her head bunting with somebody and that's what happens they'll get a fucking swollen brain but uh yeah she needs to go down the road get called out i'm not going to deny it there's another old girl green 33 she's right up there 16 15 16 17 years old too but still doing fine but anyway like i was saying with the 25 percent protein and it's got mineral and vitamin and molasses all mixed in there and so but the cows are doing good they're looking good and uh they should milk like a hot dam here come calving which is only like friggin a month away uh, so 20th of friggin uh basically 20th of march so there you go so what what are we saving look at the size of this black thing right here just massive right so what are we saving well if I was feeding round bale to these cows, it would basically be two bales a day. So two bales a day over, let's call it 100 days, that's 200 bales. And through all that cold, cold weather that we had, it would have been over two bales a day. It would have been closer to two and a half. So it would have been well over 200 bales that we would have went through. And these girls have been on 160. So we saved um, basically uh, 40, 50 ish bales, 40 to 50 bales. And don't forget our heifers in the corral at home, our replacements, they're on cut feed too. They're on the same stuff. So, yeah, I'd say. Anybody that tells us, I'm a huge advocate for grinding your feed up. Grinding it up and uh, making cut feed and feeding this way. Might cost you a few bucks in diesel fuel and time to come out here and feed these girls up. But if you have enough bunks, you could feed them up so you don't have to necessarily come out every day, right? We do it because we want to see our cattle especially in the winter time when it's really cold just to keep an eye on them make sure everybody's happy uh, so like those ones are all eating there but not all of them are eating we've got three four five four laying down on the on the bedding pack just hanging out uh, so so yeah um, the cost of grinding and then the cost of, uh, of, uh, no, fuel to drive out here on a regular basis. I, at, at a hundred dollars a bale, cause that's what we pay generally is a hundred this year. Shit. 150 to 200 dollars a bale that bait so at 150 dollars a bale i saved myself probably more like 60 to 70 freaking bales because the heifers would eat probably close to two round bales a week them 13 heifers so yeah we saved ourselves a huge amount of money, in my eyes. And the cows are doing really good. Anyway, there you go. You got an up-close look on what the cows look like, what the feed is like, and how they're doing. So, anyways, we're going to get home. I think we are going to attack uh, the thermostat in CP's truck. So, we'll let you go and we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty guys, so 
like I was saying before with the cows and the heifers, I just thought I'd come in the house and have a coffee. I got the hydraulic hoses off of that shredder. We're going to take them in and get them fixed. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyway, so with the cows, we had 160 bales in the tub grind. And that tub grind has been feeding the cows and the heifers basically all winter. Now, I know for a fact that we would feed at least two bales a day to our cows. Um, so over 95 days, that's 190 bales. The heifers probably would have gone through at least a bale or just over a bale a week, them 13 heifers. So I'm giving that one basically December, January, February, that's what, 12 weeks. They would go just over a bale a week, not quite two a week. Uh, so I'm giving them for an estimated uh, estimation of 16 bales so far. Um, so that's 206 bales minus the 160 for the t c tub grind. That's 46 bales of saving right there. And if we had to buy those bales, or if we were to sell bales, or whatever you guys want to call it, it doesn't really matter. At this year's price, for what we sold bales for, at $150 a bale, that's a savings of $6,900. So, now I'm not saying you have to feed tub ground feed. All I'm saying is, this is what works really good for us. We are somewhat set up for it with our bunks. And if you got lots of extra feed and you want to have that waste out in your field, if that's where you're feeding the cows, because that waste will convert into uh, a fertilizer content for the ground where it is, great. But... Our, all of our manure is out in the field too, except for the heifers, of course, right? So anyways, that's where it's at, right? So basically, I'm going to grind another 50 bales. Hopefully the guy comes right away, because we got basically a week of feed, cut feed left, and then we're out. So we'll get to the end of the month, and then we'll be empty. But anyway, uh, that extra 50 bales that we grind will feed, because we got 60 cows out there plus 13 heifers, so that's 73 head. So 73 head has been feeding since November 25th uh, on 160 bales. That's pretty damn good, I'd say. And the cows get zero grain. The only grain they get is whatever would be in the green feed. So they're not getting anything extra. So you guys can uh, take it from there. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's a little more work. It cost me a thousand bucks to tub grind that stuff. Um, how much money in fuel would you say, babe, that we burned up just for feeding cows? This winter. 90% of our fuel that we've burned up has been in snow removal. We've gone through 300 gallons of fuel. Probably half. And she th she's saying half. I'm saying it's probably more like a quarter. Of <laughs> It's probably about 100 gallons just for cow feeding. Not bedding, just cow feeding. Most of our fuel has been in snow removal so it's been a crazy year for with wind and the snow getting socked in here so yeah even if it was a quarter so 300 gallons of fuel would cost us at today's prices i can't even remember what the hell we had to pay for that last tank full it's a buck 20 
21 or 22 a liter for farm diesel. So uh, 1,200 liters, it's like 1,400 bucks, right? So 1,000 bucks for the tub grinding, let's say another $500 even for feeding cows, and that would be on the high side, 500 bucks for feeding. Uh, that's $1,500. We still save money by tub grinding. Because them 46 bales equal out to 6,900 bucks, right? Like I said before, fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch you guys later. Alrighty, guys. There. Dug their feeder out and gave them a new bale. Gave them a little bit of cut feed from the heifers. These guys all got fresh cut feed, so they're set for a week. Got their grain all down. Happy, babe? Thumbs up? The little bulls over there got their cut feed. The bale processor got all new, well, four new hydraulic hoses in it. And CP is telling me that she's thinking that I missed one of them. I guess we'll find out when we fire it up to find out what's going to leak or not. Horses are in the barn. It's cold. They're saying minus, uh, could hit minus 47 with the wind chill tonight. It's going to be a nasty one. Cows are all fed up in the pasture. So, outside of filling these pails, chores are done. Watch me slip and fall on my ass. So anyway, give us the old thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch you guys later.